Hello, my name is Russell Singer with the Avaya Serviceability Engineering Team. In this video, we'll demonstrate how to perform an upgrade on your Avaya Aura Conferencing 7 media server. Now, before you perform the actual upgrade on any of the media servers attached to your Avaya Aura Conferencing 7 system, you do want to make sure that the instances of those media servers are offline or shut down. And the safest way to do that is to come here to the Element Manager console for your Avaya Aura Conferencing 7 system. You'll want to expand the Feature Server Elements tree from the menu on the left. From the list of items there, you'll want to select and drop down the Media Servers and Clusters subtree, and then the Media Servers tree, and then, finally, the media server that you want to upgrade, you'll want to expand that tree as well. In my case, I only have one media server, and that's the media server that is expanded there. From that list of items under that media server, you'll want to select the NE Maintenance option. This will pop up a small window for you that will let you control the media server state. Again, this is only for this single media server. So if we had multiple media servers, we would need to do this for each one. Now from this window, we'll very simply select the instance that is listed there. It's the only instance. And you can see that currently it shows online as the admin state, link is up, and the operational state is active. So all we need to do is shut that service down. And for that, we can simply select the red stop sign button there that's listed at the bottom of that little pop-up window. We do get a small uh, confirmation pop-up that asks if, or if we're sure that we want to stop this instance, and we'll select yes, we're sure. This of course would drop any active calls on the media server. And after waiting a few moments, you'll notice that the state does change. In all three of those cases, the admin now shows offline, the link shows down, and the operational state shows unavailable. That is the normal state for a media server that is shut down properly. So now we're ready to connect to the command line interface of our Avaya Aura conferencing application server. You do need to connect to the IP address of the server that is hosting your media server. Now in my case, that's my application server because I have a co-resident environment. In your case, if you have multiple media servers that are distributed throughout your enterprise, this IP address would be the IP address of the server, again, that is hosting the media server that you want to upgrade. And you'll need to log in with the NTSYS ADM login, the NTSYS ADM login. Now what I have is a DVD ISO image that I've uploaded to my server into the var mcp extract directory. This ISO image contains the new version of the media server that I would like to upgrade to. In your case, most likely you will have a physical DVD that you'll want to insert into the server, and that's fine as well. So to get started, what we're going to do is extract the media server software from that ISO image. And to do that, we're going to run the MCP extract content command. And we're going to specify an option that allows us to only extract the media server software from that ISO image. So the command in full is MCP extract content space minus AT space MCP underscore AMS underscore platform. That will extract only the media server software from the ISO image. And you can see that there are two, really two options we have when extracting this software. Either we already have the ISO image in the var MCP extract directory, which is what I have, or you have the physical DVD inserted into the DVD drive of the server. So you would need to select the appropriate option here. I'm going to choose one. And you can see that after verifying the files, it does extract them successfully. Now we're ready to perform the actual upgrade of the software, the media server software. And for that, we do need to be root on the server. So we'll su to the root user using su minus root. Once root, we can run the mcp ms install.pl command. You'll notice that several of those characters are capital letters, and this command is case sensitive, so please be aware of that. 
Now, after running that command, you'll be prompted for the load of software that you want to upgrade to or install. So be sure to choose the correct version that was extracted from your ISO image in the last step. In my case, that is the version that ends with 05 underscore 210 zip. So I'll choose option two here. Next, the script checks for running media server instances. It is fine to have other services running on your application server, but you do want to make sure, absolutely sure, that there are no running media server instances on this server, which you'll be upgrading now. So in my case, you can see that there is no running media server instance, and that's because we shut it down at the beginning of this video. So we'll go ahead and continue the installation. We're prompted twice, once to confirm the version of software that will be installed, and then to confirm the version of software that is already installed on the server. We'll proceed in both cases, and then the installation begins. You'll notice that instead of being a fresh install, it does show that it's upgrading the media server. And this upgrade does take anywhere between five to 10 minutes. You don't really get any feedback on the command line here while it's proceeding. However, once it's done, you should see something similar to what you see on my screen here, saying that the media server was upgraded successfully and that the upgrade completed successfully. So now we need to go back to the Element Manager console and restart this media server. Now from the Element Manager console, what I'm going to do is come back to the Media Server 1 maintenance window that I have open here, or had open before, where we stopped the media server. And I'm actually going to redeploy the media server. Uh, this ensures that the latest software is basically set to an active state. So I'm going to run the deploy option there first, which is the option on the far left. And I'll just expand the details there so that you can kind of see what's happening as the software is deployed and then started. Now after you do a deploy, when you see the state change back to none, then that means you're actually ready to go ahead and start the service. So I'll do that now. I'll select the start button there. And it really doesn't take very long to run this process to start the media server. You can see that once it's started successfully, we again have our three columns in the state that we originally had them, which is the admin online, the link up, and the operational state active. So at this point, we have successfully upgraded the media server for a VIA or a Conferencing 7 system. Thank you for your time today. We welcome your comments, questions, and feedback at mentor at avaya.com or on Twitter at Avaya Mentor. For more details or related information, please visit support.avaya.com. Thank you for choosing Avaya.